In this video, I'm going to walk through the identifying ions practical. Now this practical is required if you're taking chemistry as a separate science. And in this practical, we'll be looking at the different methods you'll need to know about that test for metal and non-metal ions. So let's start out with a flame test to identify metal ions. The solutions I'll be testing are lithium chloride, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, calcium chloride, and copper chloride. You can see they all have the chloride ion in common, but the metal is different each time. That allows us to see the influence the metal, and only the metal, has on the flame colour. Different metals will cause the flame to appear different colours, and in the instructions for this practical, you're given the colours that you should see for each of these metals. They are green, crimson, lilac, yellow and red. Firstly, I'm going to dip this nichrome wire into the lithium solution and then hold it into the flame. You can see the flame is this red colour, so from our options it's likely to be crimson or red. Actually this is known as a crimson flame and when we compare it to the red later you'll see this one is much deeper which is why we differentiate it and call it crimson. Next, the sodium solution. This time we've got quite a strong yellow colour coming through. Next, I'm testing the potassium solution, and this one's really hard to see. You'll see this flame is rather light looking and one half of it you can just about see a slight lilac colour appearing. Next on to calcium. And you'll see calcium ions burn with this vibrant dark orange almost red colour. So this one's noted down as red in this practical. And finally moving on to copper chloride and we can see that copper burns with the bright green colour. I've taken photos of each of those flames so we can see them side by side with a dark background and hopefully the colours become a bit more clear but to be honest it is quite difficult to see sometimes. You can see that this lithium is the deepest red we have so that's the crimson one. The sodium flame is by far the most yellow in colour. The potassium flame shows that faint, faint lilac. Calcium gives us a dark orange flame that has hints of red at times. And copper has this obvious green colour. Now onto the tests for non-metal ions. I'm going to be testing sodium sulphate, sodium carbonate, sodium chloride, sodium bromide and sodium iodide. You can see all of these salts contain the metal sodium. We're just changing the non-metal this time. I'm going to start off with a test for carbonate ions. If we add hydrochloric acid to sodium carbonate, we get a reaction which crucially produces carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas, so we can identify its presence by fizzing. The other four solutions do not react with hydrochloric acid in these conditions, so there's no reaction and no carbon dioxide forming, and so no fizzing. Let's see this done in the lab. First of all, I'm adding about a one centimetre depth of each solution into the appropriate test tube. So on the far left, I have sodium sulphate, then sodium carbonate, then sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and sodium iodide. And I've just labelled my test tubes with the non-metal iron. Now I'm going to add about another one centimetre depth of the dilute hydrochloric acid. In sodium sulphate, there is no fizzing. However, in sodium carbonate, there is fizzing, and that's because carbon dioxide is being given off. In your practical, you might use lime water to prove this is carbon dioxide. As you can see, for the rest of the solutions, there is no fizzing because no gas is being given off. Now I'm testing for the sulphate ion. So keeping the solutions as they are, with the hydrochloric acid added, I'm additionally adding barium chloride. You can see when added to the sodium sulphate, a white precipitate is formed, whereas no precipitate is formed with any of the other solutions. 
When barium chloride reacts with sodium sulfate, barium sulfate is formed, and that's the white precipitate you can see. We added hydrochloric acid beforehand, as that removes the carbonate ions. If we hadn't have done that, we would have gotten a false positive, because the reaction with sodium carbonate and barium chloride also produces a white precipitate. So we do need to add hydrochloric acid first, to get rid of the carbonate ions. Next is the test for halogen ions. Each of the halogens reacts with silver nitrate and this produces precipitates of differing colours. The silver chloride precipitate is white, the silver bromide precipitate is cream and the silver iodide precipitate is yellow. Before reacting with silver nitrate however, we have to add nitric acid to remove the carbonate ions this is because sodium carbonate and silver nitrate would produce silver carbonate, which is also a white precipitate, given a false positive result. So here are each of my solutions in the relevant test tube, and I'm going to start off by adding some nitric acid to each. This should get rid of any carbonate ions, but as you'll soon see, I don't think I added enough here. Now I'm adding silver nitrate to each test tube. You can see a white precipitate has formed here, which means there must be some carbonate ions still there, giving us this false positive. They've reacted with a silver nitrate to form the white silver carbonate. If I had added more nitric acid to begin with, the carbonate ions would be fully removed and the solution would remain colourless when silver nitrate is added. As you can see, the reaction with chloride ions forms a white precipitate, the reaction with bromide ions forms a slightly darker cream precipitate, and the reaction with the iodide ions forms a yellow precipitate. So here's a summary of all the different ion tests that you need to know, and the result that you'll get if those tests are positive. That's the end of the video. I have plenty more required practical videos on my channel, so make sure you go and check those out.